can't believe it, but it's officially been 22 years since this bird got Randy Johnson, and I just really have no words for that clip, but a pitcher in today's game in 2023 almost got Randy Johnson by O'Neill Cruz. That ball was hit almost 115 miles an hour, and it just barely missed him. I'm sure that woke him up, and he probably saw his life flashing before his eyes. In today's MLB recap, we have a massive update, and this is so sad, on Reese Hoskins, the fact that he left a game yesterday with a potential knee injury. It's been confirmed that he tore his ACL. The Blue Jays, they confirmed that Yusei Kikuchi will in fact be in their starting rotation after his insane spring. And also, towards the end of today's video, MLB decided to rank their top 10 lineups, so we're gonna see if it's good or not. Also, yes, this is a PlayStation 5. I'm gonna be giving that away on my gaming channel because MLB The Show 23 came out today, so if you missed those videos head over to my gaming channel fuzzy gaming we're gonna have some fun now before we talk about reese hoskins i do want to talk about his teammate and i think he is now called captain america i think that we can all agree that mike trout loved the guy but trey turner he earned the name captain america for what he did in the world baseball classic and it continued in spring training this guy right here not only is he top one percent in sprint speed but trey turner looks like he's put on a little bit of muscle maybe a couple pounds but if trey turner can stay healthy and do what he's been doing since the beginning of spring training and world baseball classic this guy might have a 40 40 season i'm crossing my fingers that it happens now unfortunately now we have to shift to this clip of reese hoskins and it seemingly doesn't look like anything crazy happened, but the results, they're crystal clear. Reese Hoskins has torn his ACL, and the Phillies might be the only team in Major League Baseball to not have a single first baseman, not one, in their top 30 prospects. So I don't know if that means Kyle Schwerber is going to be playing a lot of first base, or if that means Derek Hall, who was supposed to be the full-time DH now that Bryce Harper's on the shelf, is Derek Hall going to have to be the full-time first baseman? Where are they going to find a DH? I mean, really, the only free agents left you could go grab Gary Sanchez and maybe he could be your DH. There's also a former power threat in Miguel Sano, but the problem with Miguel Sano, he strikes out at an all-time clip. He's terrible at putting the ball in play. But once upon a time, he was pretty good at getting on base because a lot of pitchers, they pitched around him. They did not want to deal with that power threat. They were trying to get easy double plays. He could put the ball in the air. Miguel Sano might be a great fit, but again, for the Phillies, they don't really have anyone in their farm system. And I just feel terrible for Reese Hoskins. He's a free agent, just like Shohei Otani after 2023. I hope that this doesn't hurt his money because this was the worst time injury ever. From one first baseman to another, Matt Olson. I mean, he has overtaken the crown as best hitter so far in spring training. He's hitting basically 450 with seven home runs. Now, I don't know if this is because he has fully unlocked his swing path because the shift is no longer there. So he's not thinking about that on every single pitch. Like it's not in the back of his mind. Matt Olson, he could go off for 35, 40 home runs easily while hitting 275, 280. If we get that version, of Matt Olson, along with his pretty much gold glove defense. Matt Olson honestly could put up a six and a half to seven and a half war season, depending on which website that you use, baseball reference or fan graphs. Matt Olson, he looks like him right now. Now, before we talk about the Blue Jays starting rotation, a guy that we used to call him, Cody Bellinger, another lefty, so back-to-back -back lefties. Uh, Bellinger is hitting 194 in spring, which is not good whatsoever. So the question remains, can Cody Bellinger go back to being him? Just like Cubs fans are hoping for a bounce back with Cody Bellinger, Blue Jays fans are hoping that Yusei Kikuchi can bounce back to what he did pretty much right before he left the Mariners in free agency. He was decent his final year in Seattle. I know I'm kind of all over the place in regards to how you should think about spring training, but Matt Olson's raking, Cody Bellinger is not. And then on the flip side, Yusei Kikuchi on the mound, he's been absolutely devastating. In 18 innings, he's only allowed two earned runs and he has 25 strikeouts. So he's putting people away with the nasty stuff. He's not really allowing free base runners. And because of that, he's only allowed two earned runs a one ERA in 18 innings. Now from one Blue Jays pitcher to another, Nate Pearson, he threw 100 plus miles an hour eight times in yesterday's start. So you say he's looking nasty. Nate Pearson, the arm is looking lively. I really feel like he could be a fifth or sixth starter depending on how they're gonna use him. I mean, the Blue Jays on paper right now could be the favorite in the American League, but let me know in the comments down below, who do you think is gonna win the AL pennant? Is it the Blue Jays, the Yankees? We have a bunch of other teams to talk about, but right now, the Mariners, the Blue Jays, the Astros, the Yankees, they seem to be the top dogs right now. The Guardians made the top 10, so they're projecting that it's going to be Quan Rosario, J. Ram, Bell, Naylor. I mean, this is on paper a pretty good lineup, and I'm hoping that Mike Zunino is never going to hit against righties. I want a Bo Naylor and Mike Zunino platoon, as well as Miles Straw. I don't want him to hit against righties. Put in Will Brennan, and that's going to make me very happy. At the ninth spot, it looks like it's going to be, ooh, Jason Hayward is projected to be the starting center fielder over James Outman. 
don't know if I would do that, but the Dodgers at the ninth spot, they seem a little bit low, but then again, they did lose Trey Turner. I guess they're not really putting a lot of faith in Peralta, Vargas, Hayward, and Rojas. So I guess when you are looking at the final four hitters, yeah, you're you're kind of asking a lot of questions. So let's move on to number eight. We have the Phillies, and that's really because Bryce Harper, there's a little asterisk by him. Also, Reese Hoskins is not going to be in this lineup. And then if we're talking about the Reese replacement, you have Derek Hall at first base. They're going to go with I mean, Bryce Harper is not healthy, so they can't use him as a DH. So again, we might have to come back to the Phillies lineup after they sign someone like Miguel Sano or they make a trade. I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but they have Captain America, so there you go. The Yankees, they have a lot of, you know, questions as well. Oswald Peraza, I don't know if he's going to be the starting shortstop. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't because there's a guy named Anthony Volpe. Harrison Bader has an oblique injury, which those absolutely suck. I've had that before and it's not fun to deal with, but when you have Aaron Judge, Rizzo, Stanton, and Torres kind of back to back to back to back, yeah, you're going to be in the top 10 for lineups. Moving on to the Mets. Now, fortunately for the Mets, they pretty much have their 100% A tier lineup. They have Nimmo, Marte, Lindor. I mean, even when you look at Omar Narvaez, he has been pretty good offensively in the past, whether it was with the Brewers or the Mariners before that. He's been known to rake a little bit, even though he's a catcher. So I really like the Mets lineup right here. I don't know if they should be higher or lower. The Braves, okay. Um, Rosario and Arcia, I don't have a lot of faith in those two guys, but considering those are the only two kind of weak spots in the lineup. I would rather have Von Grissom in that lineup, but that's just me. I'd probably take the Mets right now simply because they're better at getting on base and I feel like they have more power potential. Then again, speaking of power, you have Olsen, Riley, Albis is back in there. Harris is no joke. So I would say there's probably a draw between the Mets and the Braves right now. Uh, the Cardinals, Brendan Donovan, the power is real in spring. He's got that change stance. They have Jordan Walker making the opening day roster, but he does have a shoulder injury right now. And ever since that's happened, he has not been very good. Lars Newbar as an eight hitter. That is wild. I'd probably switch Nolan Gorman and Lars Newbar because I like Lars's potential a little bit better. The Blue Jays at three. Yeah, you better be the third team when you have Brandon Bell and Whit Merrifield as your seven and eight hitters. Kevin Kiermaier, he can hit a triple every so often, but Springer, Bichette, Guerrero Jr., Varsho, Kirk, Chapman, that's disgusting. I fully agree with them being in the top three. Padres at number two, that means Houston's gotta be at number one, but I fully agree with the Padres being in the top two. Uh, I'd probably still go with the Astros at number one. Michael Brantley's coming back for a full season, basically. I know that Jose Altuve is not healthy right now because he broke his thumb in the World Baseball Classic. Thanks a lot, Daniel Bard. I'm just kidding. I'm just giving him some guff because that's just, I hate the fact that Jose Altuve is injured. But for right now, on paper, I would still give the advantage to the Padres if everyone is healthy and on the field and no one is serving ringworm suspension. So I would take this lineup over the Astros lineup. But then again, they added Jose Abreu. They have one of the more underrated players, if not the most underrated player in Kyle Tucker. So that does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching again. I will be giving away this PS5 on my second channel. So I'll catch you guys there. Stay safe. It could, looks like it maybe could be coming in. To right and Fernando coming in will make the catch. So coming in makes the sliding catch. Swung on and lined to left field. Judge back. Judge looking up and it is off the wall. Judge fires towards second. The throw is in time. <laughs> Amber colored scoreboards. Get down, ball. What an attempt. One for two today with a single and a liner caught by Merrill. Could be a regular season lineup. There's a ground ball to the right side. That's through. That's a base hit. Long heading for third. Here comes the throw. He is out. James.